Hi guys, Cam back here at the uh, Battler Workshop and uh, yes, <laughs> it's freezing today. It's down to 14, we had temperatures up to 36, 37 last week and we had the air conditioner on the house, it was stinking hot. And we're up in jumpers now and I put the pot belly stove on the try and warm the workshop up a little bit. Um, this is my first week back at work um, after two and a half months of being off after my cancer surgery. So it's nice to get that uh, under my belt and start putting uh, things behind me and starting to get back into uh, to some normality. But um, it was a tiring week and uh, I was glad to see Friday come around. Um, today I want to have a talk about uh, some modifications I did to my Arbor Press, which is this bloke here turning it from an arbor press into a broaching press. And a broaching press has um, a lot more versatility, I think, than the straight arbor press. Uh, I found the arbor press fairly frustrating to work with, particularly when I was broaching keyways. Or you're trying to use it to push bushes in or, or, or push bushes out. And it always seemed to be that, that where the arbor press handle was, was always in an awkward spot. And you weren't quite able to get the type of force that you wanted onto it and you ended up having to pack things up and down to try and adjust it to get that arm in the right place and you'd do a crunch, then you'd uh, have to rewind back up again and then repack it again and reposition it so you could get it right. But the broaching press does away with all that and I want to show you some of the features and the modifications that I did on this Arbor Press to turn it into a broaching press and uh, some of the things I'd probably do, well, I would do differently next time because it was sort of like a bit of a trial and I didn't want to modify it too much that I couldn't go back but I'll show you some of the permit adaptions that I would put on it next time around. Um, I've got a keyway broach set up here, so I'll just show you what the action is of the broach and how it works, and uh, see for yourself just how much easier it is. So uh, we'll have a quick look at that, and then we'll have a look at some of the other features that we've got on this. All right, guys, we'll just do a quick demo with a, um, a, a broach, and uh, we'll punch a keyway into this, uh, into this ball. I'll get a bit of go juice onto it first. Yes, KA, brushy brush is still alive. I haven't sacked him yet. <laughs> We've still got some use in him. Um, this is the uh, the racks that I use. The three quarter drive on this uh, on this bloke, and I picked this up from my local Sunday market, and uh, I think that was about ninety dollars. I picked it up with a couple of sockets, so that's what we use to give out ratcheting action. Right, see so we can just gently bring that down. Like all broaching presses, we tend to work between the two wheels or feel it's comfortable working between the, the two handles. So we'll just punch in through. And there he is through. Now we can just Reversing back up. And there's our keyway started. Very, very simple. And as I said, it just saves you having to continually pack up and pack down to get that arbor arm in the right spot to be able to punch those through. You know, that ratchet takes care of all that, uh, all that action for us. And uh, this was the uh, ratcheting head I used for um, driving my under reamers and my... Uh, my uh, Chorus for doing the, the piles that my, my workshop is now sitting on. So it's had a fairly hard life, this bloke. But this is where it usually lives, is uh, on my uh, on my upper press. All right, um, we'll go handheld. We'll, we'll take you around and show you some of the features on this uh, on this bloke, and then uh, we'll strip it down and show you what uh, what it looks like inside. All right, guys, we'll see you in the tick. Okay, so as I said, all I've got on here is a, a ratchet handle. So, just take that off. And um, I've just turned down a socket that I, I picked up with the ratchet. As I said, I picked this up at the flea market. I picked a couple of the, uh, the sockets up at the market with it for about uh, $90. So, that's just one of these blokes. And as I said, just cut down and turn down. Now, I put a separate shaft over the top of here. To mount that in because uh, I wasn't sure how this was going to work out. And I've used a, a socket head cap screw where the arbor bar would go, but if I was doing this again, I would just put the socket directly into the shaft of the uh, of the arbor press rather than making up this adapter next time around. And uh, I've just machined that down. That's just been Loctited in place, and uh, 
I've heard some whacking big forces on this and uh, it hasn't moved at all. When I was looking at turning this into a, a, um, a broaching style press, I was looking at the gearing arrangements that I could put on here, um, a pawl type arrangement to give me the ratcheting function that I wanted. Uh, I was looking at putting a band brake on here to be able to give me the uh, the, uh, the back tension so that the ram didn't drop down uh, when it wasn't being used. So, as I said, I was wandering through my local Sunday market, spotted that in the corner of my eye, and uh, things started to evolve from that as they do, as we get uh, as we get ideas and we see things, and uh, decided, well, how about we use that as the ratchet, and then we'll come up with a way of uh, actually restraining back the uh, the ram. So we'll go through what we've done there. Um, the handle, as I said, I often go down to my scrapo, and he's often got old machines and bits and pieces that come in. So whenever I see handles like that, or like this one here, I grab the things because you never ever know where you're going to be using them. And all I've put on here is a an extra stub shaft that I've keyed onto the existing shaft just to extend that out a little bit to get that uh, to get that handle onto onto the end of him. So uh, as I said, we'll strip this down and we'll show you. Um, what we've done and how we've done it. But uh, it's turned it into a very, very universal piece of kit now. Um, I wouldn't be without it. I, I use it all the time for pushing in bushes, pushing out bushes. Um, as you saw, keyway breaks in there. Uh, it's become a very, very easy functional machine to use now without too much effort. All right, guys, well, I'll strip things down. We'll show you what the, uh, the insides look like and uh, the little mods that we've made along the way. All right, guys, I've stripped this down. I've just popped the pin sharp back in again. And we'll have a look at how we create the drag on the ram first. So what that means is when we lift the ram all the way up, it doesn't drop down under its own weight. It's got a drag. As I said, the commercial units have a, a band break that they have. You can adjust that band break to set the drag on the ram so that when you do lift it up, it stays in the up position. So all I've done, I hope you can see that, so I've just made up some little dental and buttons that sit inside the threaded holes of the adjusting bolts. And we just screw them in and out as required just to set the tension onto the ram. And that just sets that drag up for us quite nicely. So very simple. Um, these adjusting nuts here on the side, they actually just rub directly on the ram, which I didn't like. I thought that was really, really rough very rough. I don't think they're actually designed to take any load onto the ram, they're just supposed to guide it, but still a very rough idea of doing it. But as I said, little dead on the buttons in there, adjust them up just so you get the tension just right, and that sets the drag quite nicely and, uh, and holds the ram up for us. All right, we'll take this out, we'll head over to the bench and we'll go through some of the mods that we've done on him. All right guys, this is basically the way it sits in the arbor press with the ram sitting at the front, and uh, we wind the pinion around and that drives the rack up and down obviously uh, the rack teeth uh, which drives the ram up and down so this is our pinion shaft and as I said I've made up a, an adapter sleeve that fits over the top of that and fits on that allowed me if this didn't work I could just take this off and I'm back to what I was before just with the uh, with the arbor arm and uh, as you can see, I've got that uh, three-quarter drive socket in there. As I said, that was just machined from a standard socket to fit inside there. And as I said, locked tight it in place. But as I said, if I was going to do this again, I'd just put it directly under the end there. I wouldn't worry about making up the adapter now that I know that it works so well. Right, on the other end, I've just made up a short stub arbor that I've bored up inside, and then I've pressed and loctited a little stub extension onto that. Now the stub extension's got a shoulder on it, so I've made sure that's smaller than the diameter of this part of the pinion shaft, so that I can withdraw that all the way through out of the arbor press. Got a keyway just milled onto the end of it. And then we've got our, uh, our handle that goes onto that. Just fits up inside, and that's just a, a neat tap fit up inside. So that allows us to crank the ram back up again once we've done our, uh, our operation. Right, so this is the front face, bolt-on face for the uh, for the arbor press, and it's just got a, a wear plate 
it just pushes up against the face of that ram just to take out any slop. So I'll use the Delrin pins in on one way or the Delrin bushes on one way. And we just I've left this the way it is just with this uh, with this sliding plate. Uh, put a bit of grease in there and uh, and that works quite well. Don't need a lot of tension on these. Um, as I said, uh, this is just to keep it square so it's not uh, it's not flopping around inside it. And as I said, we use the Delrin buttons to uh, or Delrin bushes just to uh, to push up against the side just to take it. Uh, uh, stop that uh, ram dropping down under his own weight just to create that little bit of drag. Alright, we'll pop back over the other press and um, we'll put everything back together again. As I said, uh, certainly not rocket science when we're doing this. Alright guys, um, we'll see you over there in a tick. Alright, so I've just put my adapter back onto this again. That's him home. I haven't put any grease on any of these rotating parts. They do have grease points here or oil points to put on them, but it's a chrome plated shaft on a cast iron bore. It doesn't need it, it, uh, it self lubricates itself. All right, and this was existing with a part, it's just a little retaining collar just to set the end float on it. It's a little bit hard just trying to walk around, work around the camera a bit, but we'll get there. Let me just have a little uh, end washer for him. Bushes they're quite effective and locking that into place. Right, we'll get our front cover in place now. Right, so that's our front cover. If you ever want things to stay put when you're putting them in, I've just put up a big dollop of grease on the back of this. Lock it in and it stays put while you're trying to fit things up. I'm going to need to put these up finger tight. And just lock them home. Alright, so we've got this all back together now. Um, I've set the drag to a point that I'm comfortable with. And that holds up quite nicely on its own. And it's quite free to still run down. Got our three-quarter drive ratchet and goes into place. And we can just drive it back up again. So it's just turned a standard arbor press, which uh, had some, um, I guess, uh, some issues with it, as I said, around the arbor arm, particularly for hard up against the back of a wall like I am here. The thing kept sliding back and it would catch on things. Um, having the ratchet arrangement on here now, you can put that arm anywhere you like and be comfortable, particularly when you're trying to apply a force to, to push something down. So uh, a very, very simple modification to this press to, to turn it into something that's a lot, lot uh, easier to use. Alright guys, thank you for that and uh, we'll catch you soon. Alright guys, I hope you like that. That's uh, converting um, a standard tool, I guess, arbor press into something that's a little bit more useful as a, as a broaching press with that, uh, with that ratchet arrangement. Um, makes it so much easier to use and set up uh, compared to what it was with the, uh, with the straight arbor arm. Um, I received an email from uh, Rustinox. Rustinox has got a great little channel. 
Uh, he'll email you out a sticker if you want one, or he'll post it out to you and you print it out yourself. And you'll put the sticky stuff on and pop it up on your sticker board, which uh, I haven't got at the moment, so I need to pull my finger out and do something there. But he's got a great little channel. I first became aware of Rustin Ox in Emma's tool room competition um, earlier on this year. And uh, Rustin Ox put in a little oil pot that he made up just from scrap, just stuff you'd see lying around the house, the garage, and even in the street. And it was amazing. So uh, I'm going to leave a link to Rustin Ox's um, channel down in the description there. Get along and have a look. He's very, very entertaining. You, you, you'll really enjoy his, uh, his little channel. It's only small, but it's got an awful lot to offer. So uh, I urge you to go and have a, have a quick look at Rustin Ox and uh, what he's got to offer. All right, guys. Um, we've got some projects coming up next. Um, I think the next thing I'm going to do is uh, on the sliding machine there, we'll... Uh, We'll finish off the um, off the guard, but I've got a little job I'm doing in between for uh, for a, uh, a viewer, and uh, we'll do a little bit more on that a little bit later. So it's probably going to be probably my next video coming up if the stuff arrives in the post. And I've got another unboxing to do too, so a tool that uh, came into my workshop that I purchased. So uh, we'll have a look at that. All right, guys, we'll catch you soon.